Hello and welcome to the Central Coast Poetry Shows, and I'm your host, Jim Russo. My reason for producing this show is this. For about 10 years, I've been reading and attending poetry readings all over California's Central Coast. And during that time, I've had the privilege of hearing and seeing some very talented poets read their own words. This show is to be a platform for those poets to be seen and heard by you. My first guest this the tonight is Micah Miller. Micah is a Santa Cruz poet, artist, and student. She currently attends Cabrillo College as an English and psychology major. She creates art as an escape from and as commentary on the outside world in a continuous attempt to both understand and connect with others. Her poetry is done on whatever paper, napkin, or phone is closest. And her art is done with her Canon camera, her acrylic paints, and through ceramic classes. In her free time, she can be found not writing enough, drinking tea, and riding her GS500E named Goose, which is a Suzuki I discovered. She has grown up with poetry through the help and love of the Santa Cruz Word Church and the Legendary Collective, where she discovered poetry and found a home. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Micah Miller. Hi. Great to be here. I'm excited. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. So, well, we had talked a little bit about what you wanted to talk, and I'm very interested in hearing you talk about it, is the slams. Absolutely. Please. So what slam is, is it's basically competition poetry. Um, and so I'm a member of the... Uh, 2018 Legendary Collective Slam Team. So that basically means that I competed in a bunch of different slams and then competed in a final slam um, to win a spot on the team. Um, and so we usually have five judges scoring poets out of 10, and then the top score and the bottom score are cut off. So the poet gets a score out of 30, and then the best scores move on to the next round. Um, it's a really, really fun sport to do. Um, it's very competitive and it's fun to just do poetry for an audience. And of course, all the energy goes up and everyone does more giant and big performances and gets louder and louder as the night goes on. It's super fun. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like it sounds like a lot of energy. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And we really like go off of the audience. So we're communicating with the audience. The audience is constantly like snapping at what they like and like, yes, I like that. And like <laughs> shouting at the poet. And that's the best. So you can have that conversation. Right, right. Mm -hmm. That feed, immediately feed, immediate feedback. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. And I'm on the team this year, which is a lot of fun. So we're going to do a lot of uh, different slams around the Bay Area, and we're going to compete against other teams, which will be cool. Outstanding. Absolutely. Outstanding. Yep. So where are they usually held? So there is a slam every uh, fourth Monday, or every last Monday of the month um, at the Santa Cruz Word Church, which is held at the Museum of Art and History, um, downtown Santa Cruz. And so every Monday there is an open mic there, but on the last Monday of the month we hold a slam. And so signups for all the nights are 5.30, and then the slam or open mic starts at 6, and the open mics will have a featured poet at the end. The slams are two rounds, so we have the two rounds with a little break in between. Outstanding. Yeah, they're a lot of fun. Well, I hope people will uh, take part in that because it's exciting. Absolutely. And it's right here in their own backyard. Absolutely. And you have, if you haven't been to a slam, they're great to go to and just experience one and you'll be hooked. Great. Great. Thank you so much for that. Absolutely. Now, as I ask most of my, <clears throat> most of my guests, um, of all the poems you've written, do you have a favorite? It changes every day. So if you ask me to t tomorrow, it would be a completely different poem. Um, but it's just over a year since the passing of my grandma, um, and so I wrote her a poem, and so that one right now and just remembering her is my favorite. Good, mm -hmm. good, okay. Well, Micah, I'd like you to step to the podium, read that poem first, Absolutely. and then give us some more. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, Micah Miller. Forget me not, in memory of Siglinda Gotthold. When I was small, I could never understand my grandma's fear of water. I learned my Pisces, and they called me fish, and her eyes, blue as the water she feared, never smiled like her mouth did. When she was small, running from swastikas in a war she was birthed into, she crossed a frozen river, watching ice break and people disappear around her she never learned to swim. 
She kept going. I remember begging her to join me, overjoyed when she dipped in her feet. I remember her pride every time I made it across the pool and back, never knowing fear in her smile. She taught me, in every way she knew, how to overcome, how to keep going, how to fear and still keep crossing frozen rivers, how to love someone so much you dip your feet into everything you're scared of and smile. I learn every day, every memory, every smile, how to be brave. The next poem I'm going to re uh, read is called Worthy. I'm sitting in a room with five men I trust, meaning I'm sitting in a room with five men I'm supposed to trust. Supposed to trust meaning I'm supposed to trust all men until proven unworthy. Proven unworthy meaning proven by other men and I'm still sitting in this room. These five men and I, three of them with liquor in their bellies, three of them meaning sobriety tastes better than mixed drinks with these men that I trust. Men that I trust meaning there are five of them and one of me, and I'm still sitting in this room. These five decide to watch a movie, and I hear, she still hasn't seen this. Let's watch this. Let's watch this meaning I am one of them for the moment, and they want to give this to me too. For the moment meaning I am allowed to forget to be prey. Allowed to forget meaning only for the moment. A man turns on the movie. And there are jokes about rape, and all these men laugh. These men laugh, meaning I am reminded of my place here. These men laugh, meaning I am the joke here. These men laugh, meaning I am always the joke. These men laugh that I am allowed to forget for the moment. Let's watch this meaning men that I trust and their three liquor bellies are proven unworthy. And I remember, I am always prey here, left to wonder who I'm supposed to trust. Uh, this poem is a slam poem. It's called Joan and it's based off of Joan of Arc. The year is 1431. After being thrown in jail, Joan of Arc is given a choice. Option one, a dress, with no protection against her abusive guards slash rapists, or option two, male clothing, which tied together and made it harder to remove for these same guards slash rapists, would face an expedited trial and burning at the stake for cross-dressing. She chose the latter. The year was 2017. A high school student is sent to the office for wearing a shirt that exposes her shoulders. She is given a choice. Option one, a long shirt with dress code violation written in large letters across her chest or option two, go home, but miss a day of her education and face consequences for missing class like detentions and lower grades. This is to say women being expected to dress for men and the society they are born into led by men it's nothing new. The year is 2016, and I am told by a man that my red hair is far too flaming for my personality. I am told to dim myself, that this man knows me better than I know myself, and I am a match in an old wooden house that smells like rotting floorboards and tradition, and he calls himself arson for lighting the fuse when I am both the flame and the gasoline that catches, like Joan, I'll burn. Like Salem, like Molotov cocktail in a little black dress, like coals live in my stomach and kerosene runs through my veins. And when you still think my fire is for you, I will tell you to find a new fucking effigy. And when your name is the last of the fodder I have yet to consume, I will burn, even this too, 
until there is nothing left of the world we once knew but black ash and gray smoke curling. Only then will I go quietly. This is to say, if I go, you are coming with me. This is to say, I was born and will end in fire, greedy, wanting more. Um, this poem is titled Letter to Myself. Just because her hands were an ocean doesn't mean you need to live in a riptide. I felt the seas pull too, remember, and drowning is easy. I forgive you for getting sucked in, and when the water forced its way into your mouth, I forgive you for letting it fill your lungs too, and calling this breathing over and over again, as ocean hands kept us in their grasp, as we escaped one and fell into another. We, sister, are stronger than the rocks waves tumble to sands. We, sister, are hybrids that learn to breathe underwater, so we, sister, didn't even have to keep our heads above the seas. Don't fear the water now, sister. You have learned to escape the current. We are not now the nymphs we had to become. Breathe air now, sister. I don't even taste the salt anymore. This is called On Gatsby and Grief, in memory of Siglinda Gotthold, Honey Sun, and Josiah. One. I carry my grief like Tom Buchanan proud, mistress on my arm, a public show of our closeness. Two. When the sun has died, the night can't help but seem darker. Three. I've been told by almost all of my friends who ride motorcycles too, that if they die while riding, they'll have a smile on their face. Four. Gatsby was my first real experience of grief. Because love isn't supposed to let you die. Love is supposed to mean happy endings. Five. When a star dies, it first balloons out to many times its original size, as if to prove one last time just how big big can be six. When I was little, my grandma used to call full moons mica moons to remind me no matter where we were, we would always see the same one. Seven. When I read the text, he was killed on his bike this weekend. All I could see was his smile. Eight. When the sun, the moon, and a star I call friend are gone, the night seems very dark. Nine. All my grief has taught me is how very big the sky can be. Um, this poem is for my motorcycles. <laughs> The road is famished. It hunts, listening for the movement of my blood, and the corners call for my corpse. I know the asphalt has been trying to lick the flesh off my bones, but oh, how the air holds me, all spring and gasoline. How the sun caresses my neck, and the wind tangles its fingers in my hair. The only thing more intoxicating than this hunger of venery must be this hunted ride. Uh, this is a very short one called Feast. I have offered my body as feast before, which is to say, he is hungry, which is to say, without me, he should be famished, which is to say, only after he is through with me will he be full. Ladies and gentlemen, Micah Miller.
Uh, my second guest was born and raised in Fuquay Barina. Fuquay Barina, North Carolina. Gregory Greg Speed. He is a poet, a former U.S. Army soldier, and a current staff member at the University of California of Santa Cruz. In his spare time, Greg enjoys playing basketball. He's an inspiring photographer and loves anything poetry related, whether it is writing, performing, or just enjoying others' poets. Greg has been writing for over eight years now. And uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to my next guest, Greg Speed. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Jim, for having me. It's so, an honor to be here. Well, I'm, I'm glad you made, you made it, man. Uh, I've been listening to you for a while. I appreciate and it. And you knocked me out, so <laughs> that's why you're here. Thank you, sir. Uh, you wanted to talk about um, the world. <laughs> the world is a place right now. That's so I'm going to let you go. a lot of turmoil. Um, but I changed my mind. Okay. And so I wanted to uh, talk about the celebration of Juneteenth. And it also is a festival that is held annually in the United States of America in the month of June. And it celebrates the Emancipation Proclamation being passed by Abraham Lincoln. Um, the festivals annually cel are celebrated on June 19th. That is the date, June 19th, 1865, where the emancipation was actually pushed forward. Um, the Union troops um, traveled to Galveston, Texas to pass the word on to people in Texas that the enslaved people in the United States of America were now free. Um, I currently have the opportunity and the honor of reading my poetry at the Santa Cruz Juneteenth Festival for the fourth year in a row. That's good. So uh, that's a celebration of life and embracing others and life itself. Huh, that's yes. fabulous. Yes. What a fabulous birthday. It is a day. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. A day Abe's, for Abe's my cousin, by the way. He's your cousin? Yeah, we're related down the road there. On down, yes. Yeah, down exactly. the road. Yeah. yeah. So many connections, though. Um, well, I think we're all related one way or the other. Yes, Prince was my fifth cousin. Prince? Yeah, so go figure. <laughs> Abe Lincoln and Prince in the same Abe sentence. Abe Lincoln and Prince, same <laughs> sentence. Right, same right. sentence. Anyway, yeah, genealogy is uh, an interesting thing. We all have something in common. Yeah. yeah. I was The dualities and the way things, you know, the work and connect, mm -hmm. you know, we all have and a Of connection. course, now we have an African-American American girl marrying royalty. Mm. Amazing. Yeah. Who would have thought? With the time we're living in, huh? Yeah, who would have thought that? <laughs> well, Greg, uh, I'm going to ask you a question I ask of all my poets that are here at a guest. Uh, of all the poems you've written, do you have a favorite? Um, my favorite poem has yet to be written. Uh huh. But for the sake of today's show, okay. um, my favorite poem is titled 365 Days. All right. And it is a poem in remembrance of my grandmother. And I wrote the poem. 365 days after she passed away. I see. Um, and so, yes, that is my favorite poem. She lived in uh, Carolina? Currently, yeah. She uh -huh. was from North Carolina, uh -huh. Fuquay Verena. Uh -huh. Fuquay Verena. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Um, and she raised me. All right. And so, yeah, I wrote her a poem uh, a year after her passing. Cool. Well, I'm going to ask you to step to the podium and read that poem first, and then uh, give us whatever else you have. All right. Thank Ladies you, and gentlemen. Gregory Speed. <laughs> 365 days. Seasons never change. November 15th, 2012. What's the significance of a date? What's sacred about a number? It's been over seven years since you've passed. Although I knew life's changes would come eventually, it seemed so sudden when you left. After serving the Lord here on earth for 83 years and being an angel down here, you had to leave. I'll admit I've walked in circles for the past 365 days and the day you passed Chronic smoke filled my chest and lungs. 
I did my absolute best not to be sober. As it helped me to hold back the tears of sorrow, it even eased my pain. Yet as I placed myself in that self-imposed maze, locked myself, my spirit, and my words inside for days at a time, having not a clue of how I'd live in this world without you, yet no herbs or potions would hide my enormous pain. My love for you is nothing short of everlasting. It has surely stood the test of time, and it is infinite as the number eight. As your blood still courses through my veins, I stand stronger today because of your numerous struggles that you survived along the way. You are the rock on which I stand, my foundation. I thought I'd crumble the day that you left. And of course, it seemed hard to catch my breath through the tears. All at once, it seemed I was standing facing the world and my fears all alone. The fear of losing you. But then my words came back. And I couldn't let you leave without saying goodbye. So today, it's been almost seven years since you've left. So here I am, 2,999 days later, celebrating your life. You are God's gift to me, and now you are a gift to God. No matter the number of days that pass since I've last seen your face, it's been 2,000. 299 days and I'm still counting. My second poem is titled Even in Silence. As a new day arrives, I open my mind and eagerly listen as a typewriter's keys crash onto the blank page. The pace is continuous and steady as words saturate the canvas, resembling watercolor. Keys connecting with paper, art is being created on stained ink, stained pages. Napkins, receipts, or scratch paper, even in silence, I am a poet. I remember we used to crash into each other every once in a while, in and around town, bumping into one another over and over again creating artistic moments as keys continue striking the page, saying so much with our eyes each time, no words from our mouths. We pause momentarily and engage in a polite stare, silently taking mental photographs. We were meant to crash into each other. With each stroke, we'd collide, my pen and I, spilling thoughts onto paper, Inch by inch, words landing gracefully without making a sound, while making a splash. Bounce, crash landing inside of my head like bumper cars ridden by joyous young ones, screaming, laughing contagiously. My words continue to leak into the windows that is this page. I sit mesmerized as these words rain down, frozen in time, Words unraveling, thoughts like yarn, played with by a kitten, I silently breathe life into a blank canvas. Even in silence, I am a poet. Divine spirit wakes me daily, ideas, thoughts, and words anxiously awaiting to arrive from my third eye. As I transfer thoughts from pen to paper, silently spilling ink, making my daily delivery. My reality, spoken word is an afterthought, an action that takes the forefront each time I choose to stand up. Because even in silence, I am a poet. This poem is entitled, Royalty, also known as Sisters. Elaborate ebony goddess, you are beyond amazing. 
As words flow freely from the corners of your being, as corners of my mind start racing. First sight of your elegance, bliss. Chocolate embraced the curves of your silhouette. My eyes locked on a chocolate frame and it remains flawless as ever. Lavender scented kisses embrace the air and the sweet shades of your dark licorice now shine. Queen, allow me to enter your maze. Light rain, mild flurries, poetic words appear in a hurry. Don't you dare hide behind these thoughts that you have hidden inside. Just grab your trusted pen. Storms will always appear. Just leave the pages saturated. As a mask falsely represents the tears of a frowning clown, free falling like a flowing river, the black and the brown exterior. Pin the interior right away. Freedom, justice, and unity. Don't you dare hide the things you've hidden inside for fear of approval because storms will always appear. Ladies and gentlemen, Gregory Speed. Now, I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in tonight. And uh, I'd like to tell, uh, thank my guests, Micra Miller and Gregory Speed. Anyway, it's been an exciting afternoon. We've had uh, some interesting poets here in Santa Cruz. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. And again, this is Central Coast Poetry Shows. Our Facebook page is facebook.com Central Coast Poetry Shows. My name is Jim Russo. I'm your host. And uh, find us again. Thank you. Good night. I'm beating up the street tonight. I slept through the natural light. But I'll do it if it feels all right. All right. All right. Oh. Mm -hmm.